As far as how I was feeling uh, going through the motions and learning about these characters, uh, there seems like uh, I was going through most of the series kind of feeling like there's something missing, you know. And I'm going to be a little controversial and say it. Uh, I was like, I want a, just a little bit more tragedy. And to even illustrate that even further, death. I know, I'm horrible, I'm a monster, but yes. Just a little death. I need a little bit more of that. Just a little death. I need a little bit more of that. Just a little death. I need a little bit more of that. I said it. I admit it. The question is, did they deliver? Oh, damn, son. She out here taking Cubase left and right. That's what I'm talking about. Idaha ain't playing with you, clown. She's done with it. Done with the tomfoolery. In today's video, I want to get back to Magia Record. I finally finished season two and three. And so I'm here to give you my thoughts on it. And I'll be honest, it's not a perfect show. But overall, I was satisfied. I was satisfied. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time and we're going to start the video right about... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am Ryofu, and you are watching The Gaming Harbinger. So in today's video, we are in fact covering Season 2 and Season 3 of Magia Record. With Season 2, there's only 8 episodes, and with Season 3, we have 4 episodes. Which is a little odd, but uh, regardless, it could have been due to the pandemic. I'm really not sure. Now with this video, I am already under the assumption that you've seen season one of Magia Record, as well as the original Puella Magi Madoka Magica. Now, if you have not seen this, I have a terrific video that I came out with a year ago. I'm still proud of that video. Magia Record chose a different path. Now in that video, not only do I give a brief synopsis of Puella Magi Madoka Magica without ruining it, I also gave a spoiler-free review of season one. Not only that, I'm still not done. I also talked and discussed things going on with the game, which is the source material for Magia Record. If you are completely cold and unfamiliar, I recommend you watching that video first, and I will put it up in the cards right above my head right about now. I am going to discuss things that happen in Season 1. I am going to discuss things that happen in Puella Magi Madoka Magica. So those will be the spoilers in this video. But as far as me spoiling anything in Season 2 and Season 3, I'm going to do everything I can to not spoil that for you if you have not seen it already. So obviously, like I said, I don't know what happened with uh, Season 2 and Season 3 of Magia Record. I don't know if they ran out of time or if maybe they had planned to have more episodes and it just didn't work out, or if it was due to the pandemic, or it could have been all of the above. I really don't know. But I do know one thing. This was clearly meant to be a longer series. So let's jump back to where uh, Season 1 ended, going into Season 2 of Magia Record. At the very end of Season 1 and the beginning of Season 2, we learned that Magia has created a system known as Doppel that would give magical girls the ability to turn into a variation of a witch, minus the consequences, at least initially. It would kind of give them access to powers they normally wouldn't be able to utilize. It's like being a witch without actually turning into one. Also, the original intent was for a particular individual who shall remain nameless for the sake of spoilers this person would be able to wipe clean a magical girl's soul gem. So this experiment was only happening at one city at the time, so the goal was to expand this to other territories. So the Doppel system is like the game that's being sold as early access with a really 
long do you accept the terms clause? So I do kind of feel like when this was presented in the series, it kind of felt like that moment where they're like, aha, now here is our Puella twist and this is kind of like a game changer, you know, within the structure of the series. But the truth, and let's just be honest, that uh, this really is very intriguing, but it's not as compelling as the moment in Puella Magic Magical Magica where you find out that magical girls end up eventually turning into witches. But regardless, I still found this very intriguing because it makes sense that someone would at least attempt to try to fix issues with uh, turning into a witch, wh whether it be preventing it or finding a way to like hit a reset button and fix the issue with gems or I don't know, maybe manufacture millions of soul gems, you know, or something to that effect. Now here's something I don't hear too many people talk about, but one of the things I really enjoyed with this series is we got to see a variety, and I mean a variety of different fighting styles and weapons and abilities from various different types of magical girls. And I thought that was pretty cool because I mean, there are even some that we only see them for like five seconds or whatever, especially some of the scenes in season two, it kind of reminds me of like, something you would see in Star Wars where all the aliens and beings all get together to fight a common enemy. It kind of has that type of energy. I really enjoyed this segment in the show where there is one magical girl that is lost. And by lost, I don't mean dead, but like mentally broken. And another character is witnessing this and kind of coming to the realization like, I could have treated this person better. I could have been more open and got to know them and the reality is that maybe she feels like she didn't know her that well. And I feel like this is kind of like a really fascinating point to touch on and illustrate. And I apologize in advance if, like I said, if I'm being a little vague and like I said, I'm trying not to ruin it for people that might be curious in checking out the series, but it kind of shows, or at least what you're getting from this is that our actions and our inactions do affect people around us. Some people you might attend to or look after more than others. And you might expect more from others than some other people. Your expectations might be a little lower. And I just find this like a really uh, interesting construct to kind of dive into. And I think they did a good job with this overall. And this kind of happened in season two. And I thought it was very enjoyable. The handling of Crew Away I felt was fine. I have seen a few criticisms towards this character's development. I think with the little time they had to give for each character, they did enough to flesh her out. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest, there's really only one thing, one uh, circumstance that really I feel like they dropped the ball on in this series, and that is the handling of Alina Gray, and uh, <laughs> which is a shame because she kind of has like a little Junko in her, you know, I kind of get that vibe. She's kind of funny and crazy. But, uh, and, and not only that, I mean, the best part, and, and I've seen a few people complain about this, which I think is absurd, but she will have these little moments where she throws in uh, English words into her dialogue, which to me is adorable. I, I think it's awesome, but you know, what can you do? Congratulations! Everywhere, everywhere I go, they say congratulations. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, why am I saying that this was a major fumble? It's very simple. She is barely in the series. I'm talking about barely. That is not an understatement. She is barely in the show and it's kind of like she's just thrown haphazardly here and there. And, uh, and then she just shows up at the end and it's like, ta-da, or maybe I should say, ja -jong. You could tell that this was definitely a character that needed to be fleshed out more. She needed more uh, time to explain her motivations behind things that she does. And we just didn't get any of that. One of the things I am really curious is uh, maybe she was fleshed out more in the game and we just didn't have enough time to pursue that. Let me know in the comments if that was the case. So another one of the big points I wanted to talk about with this series is the thing that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, and that is the deaths in the show. So if I'm gonna keep it real with you, I feel like in terms of the deaths and the sacrifices that are in the series, 
I feel like they're solid. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm a freaking monster, but <laughs> they could add one more. <laughs> uh, something's wrong with me. I really do. I think they could they could have added one more. The one more would have just like just made me feel like, yeah, this is this is what I signed up for. Come on, man. Give me what I want. Uh, but yeah, they they could have had one more. I would have been even happier with that. Um I know there is some debates and stuff with people, I guess, that maybe played the game and they would have preferred it follow more the path of that, which I guess maybe involved less deaths, but I think I, I was pleased with this. I was pleased with the decision making and everything they did uh, with the characters that we lost. So I will say there is this character that I will not name <laughs> that she kind of feels like they were kind of pushing her to be the Sayaka of the series. And I feel like there is a moment where, um, I mean, the scenes w dealing with this character are incredible to me. I think they're awesome. I think they pulled it off in terms of being compelling, in, in terms of being passionate and you just feeling bad for her. I think they pulled it off. It had that darkness that I love about Puella, but I would say, yeah, she's not as affable as Sayaka. I mean, that's just me keeping it 100. I mean, when you see Sayaka and everything that she did and how hard she worked for the person she loved and sacrificing everything, I mean everything, for the person she loves, that kind of comes off way more passionate and intense than something like this. But with that being said, I mean, you definitely feel the sorrow and just the intensity behind um, just helplessness. I think they captured the spirit of that, the helplessness uh, in regards to this character was quite compelling. So yeah, there's a few other deaths that happened that, um, you know, I don't personally feel like they're as tragic, but I mean, they're still meaningful. And uh, I will say this kind of goes into points that maybe some other people feel about the series, which is because the attachment level in terms of like how many characters we're dealing with, you know, do you feel like deep sadness with losing these characters it's a little sad but it probably doesn't feel as intimate as the original Puella Magic Madoka Magica but I, that might have to do it more we have way more characters in this series so you ha making that connection uh, probably isn't there but maybe it's just me I don't know but I will say this in terms of the reason why we lost those characters Within the frame of the story, I think it's executed very well. I think it totally makes sense. And so, good job on that part. You know, I found that part very interesting and fascinating. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is uh, how the community reacted to the series and did they like it? And to be honest with you, it is quite a fascinating discovery because the truth is, it's not really black and white like people hated it or they loved it. It's really more like season one, a lot of people complained about it being a little slow, there's too many characters, slightly boring, and some people liked it. You know, it, it's, it's a little all over the place to be honest with you. But then when we get to season two, now people are vibing with it. Everyone talks very positively about season two. Now I do want to point this out and, and it should be obvious for people that watched it, but you do realize that season two is the one that has all the set pieces. It has all the fights and stuff. And I'm like, come on guys, w what are we doing here? I mean, I thought we were better than just the average shonen guy. Come on, get it together. Come on, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing. Don't hate on me, I'm just, I'm just clowning, I'm clowning. I will also say that the criticism of there being too many characters being introduced, I kind of understand that because you have to keep in mind, we didn't get like 12 episodes season two and then 12 episodes season three. We got eight episodes and then four episodes. So I think if we would have had more time and more build up and got to know a couple of characters a little more, that value, that emotional weight would have been there. So I do, think that is fair criticism. 
So before I let you guys go, I do want to take a moment to read uh, some posts in regards to Magia Record Season 1 through 3. So let's start off with uh, Crunchyroll. These are some posts that were made on Crunchyroll. So I'm going to skip the first paragraph of this, but you, I want to read this one because this one's a good take. Eight and a half years later, we get Magia Record, Puella Magi Madoka Magica Side Story. Most of us who have watched the original series know the gist of what happened and what is going on. However, this is exploring something different from the original series and has the magical girls fighting something other than witches. Yet whatever it is they are fighting is still quite sinister. I have to say though, however, this series is quite bland in comparison. The tone of this one is a lot lighter in feeling with an extremely sluggish story and a lack of the dark elements that made up what made the original so great. I find myself having a harder time watching this as it goes on, hoping that it will do something to excite me, but being utterly disappointing as the anime progresses. Ultimately, this is a series I dropped before finishing, I think around episode nine or 10. Ouch. But you know, I, I all you can do is kind of respect people that are honest and you can tell this is coming from a place of someone that was really into Puella Magi Madoka Magica. So I don't fault people for feeling this way, even though I might feel the opposite of it. So this next one is <laughs> Same Mood, Lackluster Story. Writing this six episodes in, they seem to have captured sort of the same tone, but really this story just isn't compelling. I don't really care about any of the characters. It's almost like taking this franchise and pushing it into the cliche format of stuff happens and then they battle the monster of the week and win. There's so many main characters, it's hard to really feel connected to anyone. It really feels like it embraces the cliche genre the original only nominally was a nod to. Yikes. Ouchie kadouchi. Okay, so let's go to Reddit now. It feels too much like a thriller anime and not enough like a tragedy like the original. I mean, Puella Mache Madoka Magica makes me cry at the subtlest moments like the twitch of Hamura's lip when Madoka compliments her name. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing because this person nails it. This person is about the life, so I, I respect it. I respect it. Okay, let me continue. But the closest I got to that in Magia Record was the failed connect, and even that only barely. Okay, so you know, um, I mentioned that earlier, that failed connect, and uh, yeah, that part, that part was a, a moment. After looking more into the game it's based off of, the anime actually feels shallow compared to that in many ways. Almost like they were trying to get it over with. From what I understand, Alina got hit especially hard in the anime, since she's more nuanced in the game and a lot of her motivations are given more depth than just the crazy art lady. The crazy art lady. Oh my god. Ooh, we rolling with this man from this day forward. She is crazy art lady. Nailed it. Nailed it. Dude, dude, I'm gonna call her that forever now. For this day forward, crazy art lady. Let's go. I think that's gonna do it for me, guys. Please let me know down in the comment section how you felt about Magia Record season two and three. Or hell, just let me know what you thought about the whole series in general. Overall, like I said, I liked it. I didn't like how they handled one character. And there's, like I said, little stuff here and there, but overall, I was quite pleased with it. I really do believe that uh, if we would have got 12 episodes for season two and 12 episodes for season three, I think this would have been enough to tackle everything, to flesh out some characters a little bit more. I think this would have helped tremendously. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to check out this video. It means a lot to me. This is a personal favorite series of mine. And just one more thing. Puella Magi, Madoka Magica, forever.